that you're in love with me. Just answer the question. And there's a whole season of this bullshit. There is. Why do I keep doing this to myself? Why? I could be doing something productive. I could be sewing. I could be, you know, making a quilted blanket. To send to my queen, Jennifer Bills. I watched this yesterday, but I was too tired to deal with it. You need a certain amount of energy to deal with this show. You do. So today I thought we'd watch it together and I'd give you guys my thoughts on the bullshit. Okay. What are you doing here? Can I come in? Yeah. I'm, I'm oh just my gosh. Out, that I'm... looks amazing. I'm so glad you're my here. My queen. I'm, I'm She's so, so gorgeous. Are you in love with me? Is that what you were gonna say? <sighs> that you're in love with me? Just answer the question. Why is she snapping a bet? So Tina has a go at Bet in the bar. Her fiance Carrie has stormed out and instead of going after her fiance, she's gone round to Bet's house when Bet is supposed to be going out to see Pippa. I'm sure Tina knows this. I'm sure she knows it. So she's gone round to Bet's house. She's stalling Bet from going to see Pippa. It's almost like she's accusing Bet of doing something wrong. Why is she talking to Bet like that? It's almost like she's snapping at Bet. This is the same Tina who divorced Bet. She divorced Bet and now she's back in Bet's house asking her if Bet is still in love with her. And you know what? Bet probably is still in love with her because Bet has always been a Tina simp. But the way that Tina treats Bet in Generation Q, it makes it really hard for me to want them to be together when Tina is speaking to Bet like this. Bet went to talk to Tina at the bar in the season two finale because Tina was giving her mix signals in season two. Tina was kind of giving Bet the idea that she wanted to get back with her and Bet lives for Tina. She lives for Tina. She's always been in love with Tina. She's obsessed with Tina. And Tina knows this and instead of doing the right thing, instead of kind of like talking to Carrie and breaking it off properly and then going around to see Bet the next day maybe and having like a calm conversation about maybe getting back together, she just turns up on Bet's doorstep and starts pretty much snapping at her in her own home. I just, I, it just makes it really hard for me to want these two to be together when that is what's going on. Considering that, you know, in Generation Q canon, Tina is the one who divorced Bet. And I know not to ask questions with this show. I, I know the score. I know to just kind of grab the popcorn and enjoy the ride and not think too deeply about anything that goes on in this show or take it seriously. But at the same time, how is it all these other lesbian shows have been canceled, but this lives? This still lives and breathes. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm an OG Tibet shipper. Like I love them together in the OG, I really do. But I don't want them to come back together like this. It's horrible. It just, Bet looked really vulnerable and she kind of looks a bit scared. I mean, I'm wondering if that was out of character for Tina and the writers are kind of attempting a character assassination right now because this is what happened in the OG. Tina definitely has a spicy side to her, but this just seems kind of below the belt. Like, I just don't like how Tina's acting here and I don't want them to get back together when Tina's treating Bet like this. It's just so hard to root for them to be together in Generation Q because of the way that Tina acts. And I know that Bet hasn't acted like an angel in the past. She hasn't, but Tina is the one who continuously leaves Bet. And then as soon as Bet tries to move on, Tina reappears and tries to kind of fuck around. Like it worked in the OG, but in Generation Q, it's just kind of painful to watch. And I've got another season of this. There's another season of this bullshit. Oh my God. There's 10 episodes of this bullshit. There is, oh no. Oh my God, what is gonna happen? Is there even any point in me sitting here trying to deconstruct what's going on. Is there really any point? Because it's just gonna be messy. It's gonna be messy and uh, yeah. <laughs> like even the thought of them reuniting right now is very off-putting to me and that's weird because you guys know how much I kind of ship 
Bet and Tina from the OG. So for me to be feeling like this about them is, wow, things change, you know? Let's hope I'm wrong. Let's hope that Tina redeems herself and they sit down and have a serious conversation about where they are and Tina stops messing bet around. I mean, let's just hope that's not gonna happen, is it? Okay. <sighs> well, on the bright side, Jennifer Beals looks radiant. She does. She will forever be my number one. She will. I really like you. Sorry, that was my impression of Tiffany Valentine from the Chucky series, okay. I wish they'd released a trailer for season three so I could kind of get a feel of the season rather than this clip, but I guess I should be grateful that they chose to give us anything at all, you know? This show is not known for its promotional capabilities. Do you know what? I am inadvertently part of the promotional team for this show. I mean, think about how much I talk about this show. <laughs> they should be paying me. They should be paying me for talking about this show. They should. You're welcome, Showtime, by the way. 26 seconds and it's got me riled up. My God, this show. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, guys, let me know your thoughts on that clip down in the comment section below. I need to know what you guys made of that. The thing is, even if you're a Tibet shipper, how can you be happy with that interaction? It just looked like Tina was making Bet feel like she had done something wrong. So even if you're a shipper, I don't get how you can think that's a good interaction, but let me know what you think down in the comment section below because, oh, it's on, it's on. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who likes the L word. Come and join the Sapphic Underground Club. Just come and join it. We have a space where it is safe to roast Generation Q over on our Discord, we do. And you might wanna join up just for the Generation Q discussion that's gonna be happening in the next few months. I have a feeling it's gonna be wild, I do. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.